Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, that's what we need. We've got to have the anointing. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. How many know what I'm talking about? That yoke is heavy on me. Sometimes, especially at the beginning of a work week, we need this Sunday night to praise and worship the Lord and break through the flesh. That way, hallelujah, we walk into that anointing, to the Holy of Holies, and we're ready to start that work week with zeal. Amen. And then people start asking you, what in the world's wrong with you? So I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I was praising the Lord last night. And His great name gave me encouragement, edified me, and got me ready for the day. Now, you want to be saved. <laughs> and they'll say, oh, okay. And some of them might, some of them may run off. But either way, it's good to have the Lord when you say it. Amen. It's good to have the anointing inside your heart. We're going back to John tonight. John chapter 9, I think we left off at, off at about 14, but we're going to start at 10 again. John 9, 10. The last sermon was called Born Blind. <clears throat> this was called the Spirit of Leviathan. That's what? like a big word, do Leviathan. L-E-V-I-A-T-H-A-N. One more time. L-E-V-I-A-T-H-A-N. Leviathan. It means huge. <laughs> the Spirit of Leviathan. Well, we went to Hawk, you know, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit of help. Hey, I had to look it up. I'll be honest with you. Verse 10. Therefore said... They unto him, How were your eyes open? And he answered and said, A man who is called Jesus. I can stop right there. Amen. <laughs> A man who is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received sight. Praise the Lord. If you'll bow your heads, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you just take this service and have your way with it. Lord, we just ask the Holy Spirit to come take over all of our hearts and lives and lead us, dear Lord, in that other realm. Lord Jesus, transfer us into your holiness. Show us your glory, Jesus. Not just the back parts, but the whole thing. The Mount of Transfiguration. Help us to be transfigured to see you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. That's your word. That's your word we obey. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. I feel the Holy Ghost already. Amen. This is almost like what happened with Nail. With Nathan. And the prophet actually gave him instruction, Elijah, to go wash in the river. Remember that? Seven times in the river Jordan. And out of pride, he refused at first. But then when he was instructed by his servant and said, if you were asked to do a greater thing, wouldn't you have done it? And so he went back and said, okay, I'll try this. And he was full of leprosy. And leprosy was a type and shadow of sin. But when he washed, praise God, that leprosy came off and he was made holy again. And that's what I'm talking about. He said, I washed and received my sight. That is type and shadow of salvation. When you become saved, when you ask the Lord into your heart, not just by lip service, not just making lip service, worshiping with your lips and not your heart, but in your heart you ask, Lord Jesus, wash me clean and save my soul. Your eyes come open. Your spiritual eyes. And you are once blind. But now you see. Oh, how many know what I'm talking about? How blessed is it to be able to see? Amen. Where will we be? And we see others walking in this plight, and we, we have to pray for them. Because we were once there one time and had no eyesight. And when you have no eyesight, you're bumping around in the dark. And as the world gets darker, look how dangerous that really can be. And being lost today. Being lost today is very dangerous. He said, Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him who aforetime was blind, and it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keeps not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. There is going to be a division among those in even the apostate church in the future. Because I would say and call the Pharisees and their religious institutions apostate. 
because they failed to see Jesus, they failed to listen to Jesus, and they refused to believe in the miracle working power of Jesus. And there are many even today that refuse, even though they know the Word of God, even though they've memorized it frontwards and backwards, they refuse to receive the Holy Ghost and they refuse the miracle working power of the Lord Jesus Christ. They even say that speaking in tongues is of the devil. <coughs> Something is wrong with people like that. And they're pharisaical. And they're apostate. And they're hard. And you know how hard it is to reach someone who is controlled by the spirit of Leviathan. And I'm going to go over and tell you what Leviathan is. Many people believe it's a large dragon. You know, some type of dinosaur creature or whatever that was in the, uh, that the Old Testament is referring to. But we know actually that the spirit of Leviathan is Satan. And I'll go into it in just a minute. I won't jump ahead myself. However, notice they mention Sabbath. And they say, since he, they perceived he did not keep the Sabbath. <laughs> they perceived he did not keep the Sabbath. But Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. He is the Sabbath day rest. And that's what they would have seen if they were worshiping the Lord, even under the law, with a pure heart. <coughs> like the wise men. The wise men were looking in the scrolls under the law, wasn't they? But with a pure heart, they were able to see that star. These are those who will not worship with a pure heart. And as they do not worship with a pure heart, whether we be Christian or call ourselves Christian in the pews, we can be just like these Pharisees many times. Because we don't worship with a pure heart. Many times we have motives in our heart. Many times we come to church for other reasons than to worship Jesus. Many times there's things in our heart when we come to church and it's not to glorify Christ. And we don't see Him moving there. The first thing we need to start doing with that church is something wrong with the church, something wrong with the church, something wrong with the people in that church. But have we ever thought about looking in the mirror and say, you know, maybe there's something wrong with me. And I need to be washed clean inside and have my motives checked at the door before I enter the church. I may be the one that is grieving the spirit in the church. Oh, all of us have done it before. Every single one of us. And this is the place to come get cleaned up. I'm not talking about having, having problems in your life. We all got problems. This is a place we should be. But we come to actually give Jesus all the glory and to see His glory and to ask His help. That's a pure motive. But a false motive is when we got other agendas, and I've seen churches do this, where they call people up to the front and ask them what they do for a living, and they get all the people, well, y'all maybe use so-and-so because he's a carpenter or he's a bug man. Y'all, that's the wrong motive to be in church. That's one reason he ran the money changers out, because it put people's mind on the flesh instead of the spirit. Amen. Our mind needs to stay spiritual. And on spiritual things, praise God, of the Lord Jesus Christ. That way we see his glory. To pray.